Hey! <laughs> Your eye sculptures are just getting better and better. <laughs> Okay, people, welcome back to it. <laughs> just thought so. Welcome back to another Foosh review. Today, let's take a look at a test shot of the Loose Collector slash Coffin Comics slash Executive Replicas Lady Death. I've looked at prototypes before and test shots, but this week's a little bit different because, well, I have this test shot, and then later in the week, I'll be looking at a dinosaur that's not quite out to market yet. So it's one of those weeks. It's like a sneak peek week. And while I'm not a huge fan of Lady Death, believe me, I lived through the 90s. I remember this character. In fact, Toy Fair still owes me money for their exclusive evil Ernie that I never received. You hear me, Seamus? But I am a fan of fellow collectors or fellow customizers uh, starting to make their own toys or going off to work in the big leagues. That just gives me the warm fuzzies. And I'll do anything I can to help support those guys because, man, we have so many talented people in the community. And that's on top of getting to play with toys. Oh, man. As you can see, no packaging. That's because Loose Collector got this directly from the factory. This is a test shot. And if you don't know what that is, that's the pull from the mold at the factory just to test things out. Looking at sculpt, how everything fits together, how articulation works, and then after this, they'll start working on paint applications and getting it nailed down. And I've said it a million times, I love getting a look at figures before paint is applied. It allows you to judge a figure by the sculpt itself. Don't get me wrong, I love a good paint job, but paint can also be used to hide flaws in the sculpt or, or to fix or tweak things. There's no hiding it when there's no paint. First of all, looking at the proportions, it is most most definitely 90s. I mean, some things are thinner than they should be. Some things are more emphasized than they should be. And th again, that's just taking 90s and throwing it into plastic form. As far as I can see, this matches the comic art really well. And if you remember back to the 90s, there was uh, the more action collectibles Lady Death line. Loose Collector's done a great job of keeping that aesthetic, but turning it into an actual action figure. The proportions are what make Lady Death, but it's also her costume, or well, what little costume there is. He's put all the proper skulls in here, you know, where it attached the leggings to the strap going up to the bikini and then the front and then in between the top of the bikini. You can also see it back here just to emphasize the back of the bikini. The top is sculpted around and it follows the line for the articulation so it implements well. It kind of blends together. The top of the leggings are sculpted on. It's not just going to be paint on the final product. Some nicely sculpted high heels and usually when I look at these things I think oh no this figure's never gonna stand. But we'll get to that. It's better than you think. As far as sculpt goes that is about it and that fits the aesthetic of the character. You know she's mostly naked there's not going to be a whole lot of sculpting on here the sculpt of the face does fit the character it's kind of hard to tell at this point with it just being this off white grayish color that's where the paints are going to come in give her the whited out eyes the heavy eyeliner the lipstick that'll add to the lightness here but even looking at the raw plastic it's a very nice sculpt another of her defining features is her long big thick wavy hair i feel like it's not as big as i've seen it in the comics before but this strikes a nice balance between functional action figure that can actually stand on its own and 90s style female comic book character. The waves coming through and, and coming down and curling around and forming little hoops, it's big and thick and kind of gets in the way of posing, but at the same time, that's the character design. This needed to be on here for this to be a Lady Death action figure. Until a company perfects that 112th scale real hair coming out of the scalp that you can pose and put anywhere you want, this is usually what we have to deal with. But honestly, even with this big chunk of plastic coming off the back of her head and the high heels, the balance point to get her to stand is not that bad. Sure, you have to fiddle around with it if you want an action pose. It does take some messing around, but at the same time, it, it's no different than most other action figures. I think high heels, this figure's not going to stand unless you're leaning it against a wall or have a staff to hold it up or just standing straight up and down all the time leaning in one direction. I haven't had much of a problem here. One of the things you notice about the plastic itself, it is shiny. On the skin, Loose Collector said the final product will be more matte, which of course will have more paint on it. That'll help knock that down a bit. One of the cool things here is no peg holes. You can of course see the joints. I mean, it's plastic. It's an action figure. It's got to move and the plastic has to get out of the way of itself, but 
holding it all together? Yeah, you can't see that. Notice the black on the arms and the legs. That's because she wears some sleeves and some leggings that are black. It'll be painted black above this, but this gives us a good look at where the swivel joints are. You can see some musculature sculpted in, but he's picked a point that is the roundest, so when you turn it, it doesn't really break the sculpt no matter how far you go. It's even better down here at the leg because most companies would have put the swivel up here at the top of the thigh. Putting it there, it would have broke the line for the costume. Down here, right above the knee, not only does it hide it within the blackness of the costume, it's also at another point that's the most round. So you turn it again, it's not gonna break the sculpt. You can put it in any direction and it doesn't look like she's breaking her musculature or anything. Speaking of articulation, there is a peg in the neck going up to a ball joint in the head. And those two working together, you can't really look up because of all this. It's hitting in the back, but you can look down. So much tilt. Swivel, hinge and swivel at the shoulder. You can see it all the way out here. That goes all the way. And if you don't like going that direction, it also swivels around to the top I and mean, well, all the way back down too. Like we talked about, swivel at the bicep. Single elbow, but it does come up past 90 a bit. Hinge at the wrist goes, well, all the way. And then that swivels. Ball joint at the mid torso, nicely hidden by her physique and costume. Gets okay hula hoop action. Because the head can't really look up, you're not going to get into super actiony poses. So this is for some subtle nuance. Also really like how far her arms can go in. You would think it'd be out a bit. No, it cuts down. There's nothing to hold them up. Ball coming out to the hip can bring it all the way forward. Back, not so much. There's some plastic getting in the way. But out really surprised me. Again, thigh swivel is lower on the leg. Double knee. Oh yeah, no problem. Boop, 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 boop. It does kick forward a bit. And in my brain, that makes me think, again, 90s crazy stylized artwork, but I don't care for that. Hinge of the ankle goes back, goes forward, and then a forward facing pin for rocker that is angled down a bit so you get some kick to it too. Man, that's actually not bad rocker. For accessories, Lady Death has two splayed out hands, and then she has two weapon gripping hands. Those just pop out. It's a nice, satisfying pop. They aren't just going to fall out. And really no problem putting them back in either. The weapon holding hands aren't hinged up and down, which is what I usually like to see here. This has great range side to side, but when it comes to swords, I like to see them be able to hold straight out. Unfortunately, I didn't get the weapons. I don't know if they're still working on the molds on those, but the final figure will have a sword and a scythe. But I do have this sword I don't know where this came from, but it's got little skulls, so it's Lady Death-like. A little flex to her fingers to open up, and a very tight grip on, well, well, I'm assuming it'll be the same for the sword that she comes with, but that's not bad at all. And she also has no problem holding the weapon with two hands. And then she has her cape, again, just in the base plastic, but it's a nice sculpt. You have some flow waviness to it. It wouldn't be Lady Death without a skull somewhere on it. And I also love that he took the copyright information and put it on the inside of the cape instead of somewhere on the figure. I showed a minute ago, her head pops off, the cape slips over, and you pop the head back on top. It forms to the neck and shoulders really nicely, but I've noticed the tendency for it to kind of fly up a bit. It's not too far up. It's easy enough to just fall back down, but eh, just pointing it out. The cape being a little soft, but mostly just plastic, that's another thing to add to the weight on the back. It's still not as bad as it could be. You'll notice the lean a bit forward to offset the cape weight, but... Mm, not terrible. Lady Death stands about six and an eighth to the top of her actual head and then six and a half to the top of her hair. That puts her slightly bigger than the Marvel Legends Phoenix and Rogue. But I feel like that fits the character. She's a bit more imposing. She's a bit more <laughs> 90s. I keep coming back to that, but that's what she is. It's 90s. Same goes for the Marvel Legends MCU characters like Domino and Black Widow. And she's bigger than the Marvel Legends movie Deadpool and Cable. But she does fit right in with comic book style Marvel Legends. So at the end of the day, oh, this gets me excited for the final product. As I've mentioned several times, you're not going to get super dynamic poses here, but it moves more than you think it would. The hair does get in the way mostly of up movement, but Loose Collector has tried to sculpt it in a way that will get a little. That's just the nature of the beast here. The torso is also a bit limited, but because of the combination of the head and the torso, you're not gonna be down on the ground, crouched over or lunging. You're mostly in sword poses, walking, doing magical type things. Because besides those two points, the arms, the legs, the hips, the ankles, everything else is damn beautiful. I can't wait to see the final product on this. The paint, if it matches the prototype, is gonna be fantastic. The transitions from shadow to white skin or the black leather to the blue highlights, oh man. 
that's going to be a treat. On top of that, this makes me excited for more characters that Loose Collector has shown off, like Hellwitch or La Muerta. Give me a line of these action figures. So if you're a fan of Lady Death, this is the action figure you've been waiting for. If you enjoyed the review, comment, like, subscribe. Much, much love to the plus. If you're interested in seeing videos early or just in a position to help out the channel, patreon.com. But wherever you may be watching this, I'll always catch you on the foosh. I don't know if I'll try to paint this one up or not. I kind of just like it like this, and I have the standard version on order. So I'm waiting for that, and this will be a nice one-off somewhere just sitting off. And, and, and well, I guess I do have some other test shots that I could have a display of those, but yeah, I like it like this.